<laughs> okay, so this is Toucan Sam and Mr. Bond with Kenny on commentary doing Assault Android Cactus in three, two, one, go. That was a solid countdown. It's a good start. <laughs> so this is Assault Android Cactus. It's a top-down twin-stick shooter, which you can play with a gamepad as Mr. Bond is doing with Aubergine. Or you can play it with keyboard and mouse, as you can see Mr. Uh, Toucan Sam over here doing with Start. Yes, I almost confused their <laughs> names. I'm doing great. Um, you can see that there's this targeting reticle on the screen, which is uh, Sam's mouse pointer. Uh, so you can see where he's aiming, whereas Mr. Bond just has the line that shows where his right stick is aiming. Um, left stick moves, right stick shoot, uh, right stick aims, right trigger shoots. That's generally how this works. Um, so the premise of this game is we've got these androids that are making their way through this ship, which is called the Genki Star, oh, please give because me that. the ship received a distress signal, or sent out a distress, distress, distress signal, which was received and dispatched to Cactus, the title android of the game, uh, because the robots have gone haywire and are trying to kill everybody. Uh, and the Nexus Corps, more disturbingly, has gone offline, or has, has gone incommunicado and is not talking to anybody. So these androids are making their way through the ship, past the killer robots, past the section lords, and trying to figure out what happened to the Nexus Corps. It's weird that you beat me on that one. Must have had more surges. So, but they just finished the first level, which is called Descent. We're into the second level now. You can see that each level is sort of a little arena type thing. And each one has its own little features. So like this level has holes in the ground, uh, which you will find <laughs> out very quickly that the game will not let you fall in a hole as opposed to say Helldivers. Um, you can't walk, obviously you can't walk across holes, but you can shoot across them. Uh, now on the subject of shooting, I should point out that, well, the weapon that Aubergine has is kind of not subject to normal shooting rules. Um, Hello is the, ro the name of the robot that Aubergine uh, controls as a weapon, and it just goes around slicing everything, and you can basically control it within a certain radius. Uh, and it's actually really hard to control on gamepads, so shout outs to Mr. Bond for making this kind of look easy. Um, <laughs> That'll but, change. Uh... <laughs> to... Yeah, it definitely will. Meanwhile, Starch has a laser, which, uh, when you're playing casually, you may not realize it, but something that's very important to note about you the can laser take that is... One. It is stronger the closer you are to enemies. And one thing that's also important to realize is you can walk into enemies and like the process of walking into enemies won't hurt you in this game. Obviously the attacks that they perform will hurt you, but walking into them won't. So you can just face plant right into enemies as Starge and try to kill them really fast. Um, each character also has a secondary weapon. Starch has missiles that home in on enemies. And Aubergine has a singularity which kind of draws enemies into it. It's basically sort of a gravity well sort of thing. Uh, and you can see it was just used right there. Um, you have to be a little careful when you're playing co-op to make sure that you're not accidentally drawing enemies right towards your co-op player. But mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're gonna happen. see people, you're gonna see people take downs. Uh, and falling down in this game costs you time, but there's no like limited life counter or anything like that. Rather than that, there is this battery that you see in the top center of the screen, which is basically a timer mechanic. And we actually just saw Aubergine pick one up. Um, the full battery meter lasts 60 seconds. And every time you pick up a battery, uh, it generally gives you at least 30 seconds more time um, up to the maximum of 60. So uh, if you're really low on battery, it can actually give you more time. So the game has a few like mechanics built in to try to make it more forgiving. So it kind of, it manages to scale to your play level without really having to do anything outside of its own design. Like there's no difficulty settings. It's just a matter of, you know, how kind of setting your own bar in terms of how you play. And when you want to go fast, you generally want to uh, power up your weapons as quickly as possible, which I'll discuss in the next stage. And avoid going down because that loses your weapon power-ups, your weapon energy again. So as they kill enemies, you're going to see these little white pellets that drop, and they kind of like draw them in when they're within a certain range of them. Those pellets give you weapon energy. If you look at the HUD at the top left and top right corners for each character, there is the life bar, uh, which actually will recharge if you don't take damage for a few seconds. Uh, and then there's the weapon energy bar below that with little pellets on the side. The pellets represent what level you're at right now. So each of these players are at weapon level two at the moment. And when that bar fills up again, they'll be at weapon level three, which is where you want to spend most of your time because that is the most powerful weapon level. Um, you also noticed right there that the battery actually 
almost expired on the floor there. Batteries stay around on the ground for about 10 seconds, and they start flashing green and red when they're about to expire. And you want to try to not let them do that. Although if you miss one battery, it's usually not the end of the world because you can usually hold out until another battery comes in. I should start discussing enemies. <laughs> so here we've got these Titans, oh, these no. bomber Titans. Oh, okay. boy, which just got, <laughs> oh. the, uh, just got the drop on Sam there. I was so happy you went down first and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Karma, <No>. man. <laughs> so right now we've got a bunch of kegs, which are just these little melee crawler enemies that can only hurt you when you're close to them. Uh, we saw the bomber titans, which shoot out those bombs. Uh, we'll be seeing some other enemies. We'll, we'll discuss those in the later stages. But first we have uh, the first boss. So each sector, each zone has a boss at the end. So there's five levels and the fifth one is a boss. This is Embryo, otherwise known affectionately as Doormat. Um, because, well, he's he looks formidable when you first play the game. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of risky. A little bit. And I should talk about how we take risks in this game. Um, so Embryo goes around shooting these bullet patterns that sort of fan out. And when you're new to the game, you're probably scared of him and want to, like, keep your distance. But keeping your distance is actually arguably worse because then the bullets are more spread out and they're actually harder to avoid. So staying in close, as you see Starch doing right here, um, is actually really important to, well, one, doing damage fast, and Starch's laser, as we said before, does damage more quickly when you're closer, but also just to efficiently maneuvering around bullet patterns. Now, one thing I want to point out with that, one of the phases we just saw was, you saw that Starch was very purposely like staying in the center of the bullet pattern, while Aubergine was on the outside. And as long as only one of them is drawing the focus from the boss, then that's fine. But if the boss ever changes focus for some reason, like, for, uh, remind me guys, does the boss change focus when you, like, based on how much damage each player is doing to it? No, it's based on works? whoever's closest. Oh, it's whoever's closest, okay. So Sam wanted uh, Sam wanted to stay close, and Mr. Bond wanted to keep his distance so that he didn't suddenly so that Embryo didn't suddenly switch targets, which would have swept the bullets across Sam, and he probably would have had a bad time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they they made short work of Embryo, and now we're into Hive, which is the first level in the second set of uh, levels in the second zone. And you'll see that the entire artistic direction of this level is completely different. So each zone of the ship, and there are five, uh, has completely different artistic design. <clears throat> Uh, we're being introduced to wasps here, which uh, don't take a lot of... Th th they're pretty weak, they don't take a lot to kill, but there are usually a lot of them at once, so you want to try not to get swarmed. Like, if there's only one of them hitting you, it can't damage you that much, but if there's, you know, a swarm of like 10 or more of them, then they could actually take you down really quickly if you unwittingly kind of run into them. Um, so other enemies we're seeing here are, we've got the kegs again, we've got these drones, which are the little flying things that shoot bullets every so often. We've got hunter kegs, which shoot three blue bullets in a row. And we've got the titans. Remember the titans. Everybody. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I should also discuss the power-ups that we're seeing. So you'll notice that there's power-ups that spawn on the stage when enemies die sometimes. And it actually cycles between three colors. There's the red power-up, which is firepower, which you'll notice these guys getting more often than not, because obviously it's pretty much a free upgrade to your damage per second, so more damage is always a nice thing, because it means you can kill enemies faster and complete stages faster. The yellow power-up, which we just saw over there, and uh, Mr. Bond just grabbed <laughs> at a meaningless time, is Accelerate, which makes you run faster and also makes energy and batteries attract to you from farther away. So that can actually be useful if you are in a phase where you really need to like employ evasive maneuvers, but also don't want to lose weapon energy, obviously. Uh, and the third power up, the blue one, it, which we saw a couple times on Embryo, is Shutdown, which uh, makes all enemies stop moving and completely disabled for a couple of seconds. It also, for the person who picks it up, it recharges their health and gives them several seconds of invincibility. No. Um, when, Dang it. when you're playing co-op, that's actually uh kind of important to keep in mind who picked up the shutdown because it's easy to forget that you didn't pick it up and then you try to tank damage but you're not invincible and you end up kissing the pavement uh so this level is called influx and you can see that the level design actually changes pretty considerably between phases and we're going to see some more of that in later levels in the game as well um this level introduces fidos which are, they, they just want to be your friend and play fetch with you 
Uh, but they play fetch with missiles, which you, you don't want to catch those. So you'll see these targeting reticles. We also saw this on Embryo, the first boss. You'll see these targeting reticles, which uh, kind of get smaller and brighter as they close in. <laughs> And you don't want to be there. You you, you want to you want to get out of the way of those before the missile actually drops. Um, so that was the end of influx. We're going to go into oxygen next, which is the donut level. Um, it starts out not oh, too okay. bad. Also, by the way, mega kegs and a nice shutdown there <laughs> right as the mega keg dropped on Sam. Um, Mega Kegs are the big red ones, which take more damage. Uh, we're also going to see Blaster Titans here, which are the second form of Titan. Uh, and they pound the ground, as you can see, and send out a shockwave. They're actually, I don't know, I would argue they're easier to deal with than the Bomber Titans, just because as long as you circle strafe around them. Oh, by the way, mines? Yeah, mines. This is my least favorite phase of the level. Um, so, incidentally, mines are sort of like what the Bomber Titans shoot at you, but... Um, there are different types of mines between what the bomber titans shoot, which don't count towards your chain or towards enemy kills, and the bombs that just drop from the sky. But yeah, bomb, bombs dropping from the sky is not cool. And having Accelerate helps to potentially avoid getting directly dunked on, because sometimes you really aren't going to see it coming until it's too late. That was weird. So now we've just got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of uh, hunter kegs here. We had, I think, uh, some bullet turrets in the previous phase as well. So just blue bullets all over the place. Uh, and now we've got some more Titans. Remember the Titans again, everybody? Ah, fudge. And you'll notice that the bombs, when they explode, <laughs> when, when bombs and missiles explode, they show their, their explosions are red. Um, and the Blaster Titans' attacks are also red. Oh, Whereas when, when lesser enemies uh, shoot, they shoot blue bullets, usually. And the difference is red damage will actually damage either you or enemies so you can actually get enemies to kill each other with red damage whereas blue damage will only sh will only hurt player characters and yellow or orange damage which is what the player characters shoot will only damage enemies no, so this is there. this is process this is the conveyor belt level so if anybody loves conveyor belts this is the level for you ps nobody loves conveyor belts um We've got all sorts of review of the various types of enemies that we've seen until now. Pretty much, you know, here we've got the <sighs> bullet turrets again, the drones. There's a lot of bullets happening right now. And obviously the conveyors don't help that because you can end up just kind of veering into a bullet as the conveyor moves you towards it. So you kind of have to keep in mind where you're standing, which way the conveyor is going if you're on it. Because if you try to move against the direction that the conveyor is going, <sighs> you're basically going to go nowhere fast. Give me, give me turn red. There we go. Did we yes, skip sir. wasp phase? Uh, no. Here no, it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think there was phase skipping in this game. It'd be one heck of a skip, really though. Confused. Yeah, we'll just uh, accidentally invent a sequence break that we've never seen before at the marathon. And be okay. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> there needs to be one of those, but I don't know. I've had a couple of moments like that in this game and in some of the levels that I can point out later. But, but uh, let's see. What? Oh, I haven't talked about the chain meter, which you've been seeing a lot of in the corners underneath uh, the HUD. So what does this chain mean? Well, this chain has to do with scoring of the game. And this game is, you know, very arcade oriented in terms of you can go for high scores in every single level. Uh, but let's talk about the second boss first. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes this boss. And you're going to see why really fast. Yeah, hi. Remember wasps? We've got wasps. We've got a lot of wasps. So this boss's phases alternate between wasp phases and phases where you actually yeah. have to hurt the boss. Be brave. Be no, brave, Bongo. No, 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 you're not getting that one. I don't think so. <laughs> so now we're in the first phase where the boss actually comes out and shoots at you. But now we're going back into the next wasp phase. This I tend to find to be the hardest wasp phase because of the way that they surge in and out. Um, Oh no. Okay, Sam did have firepower going into that, but that has run out. So oh, yeah, no. now they just kind of have to <laughs> work with the tide come here. Come on, come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, dang it. Oh, uh, that was unfortunately, unfortunately kind of a waste of a shutdown, but. It looked cool though. <laughs> Almost worked. New screensaver. Uh, all right, so. Jesus, for no reason. 
We saw yeah. the vines in that phase. Those are going to make a comeback in the phase after this one. This phase, you can generally kind of keep the boss rolling around the edge here and not really going fast. So I, I find this easier to manage than the third phase. So now we've got the vines again. Um, the vines do generally come out in like a diagonal, in diagonal directions from the front of the boss. So you can kind of predict where they're going to be. I tend to just weapon swap through them, which is something that I need to talk about because we haven't talked about weapon swapping yet. So we're going into the third set of stages, which has a really cool, like, aesthetic style to it. Um, reflective floors, like, freaking yeah, uh, spectrum analyzers on the side of the level. Although, actually, are you on, like, low graphics settings or something? Uh, it shouldn't be. Oh, yeah, I'm just noticing that I don't see the up. spectrum analyzers on the side of the level, and I'm like, why not? <laughs> I've yeah, never yeah, noticed yeah. that not being there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this level <laughs> looks more like a progressive level than most of them. Like most of them have been arenas. This level doesn't look like an arena, but it still plays like an arena. If you you can't skip enemies, if you skip enemies, you're gonna end up having to go back for them, or the level like this this hallway section here can end up actually just stretching on forever. Um, but as long as you defeat enemies and pick up batteries, uh, the level will progress into the next section. Uh, also, we've got super mines here, which cause oh. really big explosions. Uh-oh. thought I swapped I tried to that. save you. What, well, actually, what did he get hit by? A uh, uh, tiny uh, mine. mine. Was it? Okay. I was going for a swap. Oh, okay, here, okay. But it's bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. So first, you have that mines. Like mines you have the bomber titans, which shoot more mines. Remember the titans, everybody. Um, oh, my god. <laughs> it's going to happen every time. Never <laughs> stop it. Never stop doing that. <laughs> what freaking and out with the black hole? here we have the first laser turret, which if you blink, you oh, miss because it's already dead. Um, the interesting thing about those laser turrets is they are red lasers, which remember what I said about damage colors, red damage can hurt enemies. So if you want, you could actually kind of, you know, square dance with that laser turret and try to let it soften up enemies, but it's probably not worth it, especially in multiplayer where you've got more enemies doing more things and shooting more stuff at you. Uh, and yeah, remember that. Oh, we've got another nope. laser, which is He's already gone. gone. <laughs> and we've got more titans. Don't forget them. Oh, I got yellow somewhere. Okay. So we're actually nearing the end of the level here, as you can see by the enemies remaining, which always shows up at the bottom of the level. And actually, the next level is really interesting, and it is actually a really good place for me to talk about weapon swapping, which I was going to talk about earlier and didn't get a chance to. No, I don't um, weapon swap. I coward strat. <laughs> Same thing. What? You'll see. Ah, well, gosh dang it. it's yeah, it gets to be coward strat on like certain like huh. I do coward strat on like dust dealer, which we already passed, but um, mm -hmm. I assume by coward coward strat you mean just keep swapping. Oh no, I hide behind the box. Oh, okay. <laughs> I let Bond get hit by the laser. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'll notice that this oh. level is continuously, like the background is continuously moving. And what we're going to see in this section coming up here, and there's actually an audio cue for it, oh. is there's a laser. Oh, I got hit too. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you nearly oh, died, but you yeah, did not weapon swap. I did not, So no. I was surprised there. I don't have um, the audio so cue to weapon swap right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, how are you going to do weapon swap when you're lagging right now? Hopefully that won't be an issue at the event. It's very tough. He tries. He tries. This is why he does oh. single player practice, so he can oh practice the actual timing, not the 50 milliseconds delayed timing. Um, Alright, I'm going to hide behind that coward one. Coward Strat. Yeah, he should probably use Coward Strat in this, in this level while he's using Moonlight Stream to connect. So yeah, when you weapon swap, Ooh. you actually glow white for a split second, and whenever you're glowing white, you're invincible. So you get, it, it, you, the weapon swap is actually also a dodge mechanic, and it actually tells you that in the tutorial. It, it mentions both. Um, but you really have to kind of get used to using it. And there, it's, it's definitely possible to at least get to the final boss of the game in a casual playthrough, if not also beat the final boss without ever learning how to weapon swap. The think... final boss really kind of, you know, encourages you to uh, master it though. I think I um, might've so actually done that too not knowing about weapon swap until the very end. Yeah, I definitely did. The first time I played the final boss, I played it with Coral and basically, you know, whooshed <laughs> out with the uh, plasma field the whole time. Um, <clears throat> but then I had a really bad time with the last phase. Anyway, we'll see that later. Um, we're seeing some new enemies in the stage. So we've got these orbital factories, which are these big green round things that have these little fish that kind of swarm next to it. 
and you generally don't want to try to go right underneath, run right underneath them, because you're going to get hit by all the fish and you're going to go down really fast. We're also seeing wasp tanks. So there's these tanks, and when you, uh, you know, they're kind of like pinatas, except instead of candy, mm. there's bees. So you know, not don't it don't 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 sign these guys up for your for your kid's birthday party. Um, so we got through transit, which tra transit is definitely kind of the first level. That's like okay, we're getting into serious business. Speaking of serious business, oh, more no. bees, and also a flamethrower on the side of the level. So this look, this level is aptly called Heat. And uh, yeah, it's called that because there's a, there's flamethrowers that come out of the sides of the level, and we'll see that it'll reverse direction no, at some points. You left me. Oh god, <laughs> I Sam had to. Getting sorry. <laughs> okay, so we just saw that it actually reversed direction, and actually noticed the flame just killed an enemy up there because the flame is also red, so it can do that. Um, which is actually kind of useful when you've got some lesser enemies. Oh, hello, mine phase. Yep. I don't know how it's lived. There's one of those here too. Weapon swap like your life depends on it, because it kind of does. Um, so now the jets have stopped, which gives you a false sense of security. Because? Uh, pro tip, don't stand near where the jets turn on, because the jets are kind of going to turn on at some point. Once this phase ends. There you go. Yep, I think, I don't know if an enemy just got cooked up there or not. but Probably not, it probably got killed right before it turned on. There it is. Um, and now we're seeing that the level changes direction, and the jets kind of go on and off as it changes. And that's going to happen a few times. And it's just kind of going to keep growing in intensity. That's kind of how these levels work. They introduce the mechanic, and then they just keep getting crazier and crazier. And now you can see that both jets were actually on. And they're getting towards the end of the what? level now. Uh oh what? Ooh. I didn't see what hit you, because the flame didn't. I have no idea already... what hit me. You were down before the flame actually crossed you, so I'm not really sure. <clears throat> I think it was a hero wasp. A hero wasp? <laughs> what exactly is the meaning of hero wasp? He sacrifices himself for his friends. <laughs> Meanwhile, I like that f that flame right in the uh, camera angle at the end there. Okay, so we have another uh, level that involves rotating things, except now the entire ground is going to rotate. So if you remember the conveyor belts from Process, uh, this is kind of like those, except there's more of, well, maybe not more of them, but they're concentric circles, so the middle thing doesn't rotate, the one right outside that does, and it alternates. So the third one stays put, fourth one rotates, and the out outermost one, which you probably don't want to be in too often because mm. you're going to be away from the action, uh, also stays still. Give me! Now what? Hmm? The power-up is running away. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to mention, actually, you might think that one of the strategies here is to stay on the non-moving platforms. And, yeah, generally, that's probably a good idea, because it's one less thing for you to deal with, is figuring out where you're going. Uh, but even if you're not on the moving platforms, the enemies and power-ups can be on the moving platforms. Uh, and so, yeah, we had Sam asking power-up senpai to notice him, please, before. Um, so we've got, again, a mix of all the enemies that we've mostly seen and i think we'll be seeing the uh vector factory shortly in here as well uh they're little smaller no. red versions of the orbital factories yeah here we go oh, here's the boy. vector factories they ha they again have little fishies but instead of swarming around them in a circle they shoot right towards you hence the name vector factory i don't get it where is he well, i can't factory. kill this guy <laughs> jesus <laughs> Do I need to explain math during this run? Oh. Yes. You can try. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, Close. vectors generally have a velocity and a, or I shouldn't say a velocity, a speed and a, a, a distance and a direction. And you don't well, know. Yeah, I, I can't explain this. <laughs> vectors are generally, let's put it this way. Vectors are often represented by an arrow. So you can think of it as the little fishes oh god stop messing with the camera please i'm sorry i thought he was gonna say stop trying to explain math please <laughs> i think i'll stop um, anyway no i um, stopped listening to that it didn't make sense <laughs> it didn't make sense you're correct note to self don't try to explain math at an actual marathon <laughs> how, how to lose viewers huh? <laughs> or gain viewers depending Actually, I wonder if they'll ever uh, speedrun frog fractions. But anyway, um... Okay, third boss. His name is Justice. He just rained from above. Shoutouts to Overwatch, everybody. Um, and he has a big laser. 
Uh, and it's very much choreographed so you can tell when he's going to fire. He does actually track you until shortly before he's going to fire, basically when it charges up, right before he fires. <clears throat> um, okay, so they're already through the first phase, so we didn't get to see some of the stuff that normally happens there. He dropped the laser fences, which we will see more of. He also tries to drop little orbs that will tether to you and try to take you for a walk, which is not fun. Uh, now we're through the second phase where he shot a bunch of little rocket things at you. Um, which will generally take you down in one hit. Uh, here we've got laser fences again, but because they use shutdown, you're not really seeing too much of them. Uh, they somehow drop chain, which I actually didn't get to finish explaining before, did I? I don't know how we did. I think we skipped one of his heads. Well, that was a really good justice, so holy cow. 52 good. seconds, I mean, geez. Oh, gold split, all right. We won't actually have splits to compare to on the actual <laughs> marathon. We'll just uh, all right, so now we're into the fourth zone, and level start get level design starts getting really dynamic oh. here. So we saw influx before in the second zone, which had a lot of like changes to the levels through each phase. Here we're going to see different types of platforms dropping in and out all over the place. Um, and generally, you want to try to find a platform you like and try to stay on it so that it doesn't drop out and get replaced with a crappy platform. Because um, you'll see that some of the platforms have holes in the middle, some have a big gaping hole like that one at the top Ooh. right now. There's there's a half a platform over there in the bottom right right now. There's a platform with four columns in the bottom center. Um, and sometimes there's platforms that have like a mix of like three holes and three columns, which is... The worst. So hopefully, hopefully we don't get stuck with those. <laughs> uh, also, we've got more mines dropping on us here. Um... In single player, I like to take Accelerate to avoid mines dropping on my head here, but uh, it's much harder to predict what's going to happen when you're playing co-op because there's more enemies. Uh, so, like, it's generally the same formation in terms of, like, what types of enemies are in each phase, but you will have more of them. And... Whoa, that was unfortunate. Whoa. <laughs> How many Titans? Remember the Titans, everybody. We've, they want to make sure that we don't forget them right now. I feel I feel like this is gonna get really old by the end of the run. Nah, nah, it's fine. It's, it's fresh. fresh. I love it. So, so meanwhile, uh, I didn't discuss chain. Let's discuss chain. Um, <clears throat> as you kill enemies within a short time span of each other, like two seconds, uh, you will build up this chain, and you'll see that like there's this sort of radial meter around the chain that indicates like how much time you have to kill another enemy to keep the chain going. Now, chain multiplies your score up to 10x, as you can see uh, on both of their chain counters right now. You also see that sometimes the chain turns red, which is what happens when you surge the chain, which happens if you kill two or more enemies in a really short span of time between each other, like we're talking like a quarter of a second or less. Um, if you're going for score attack on this game, there are a couple of characters that are really good at chain surges. Um, and they're... Oh, uh -oh. oh couldn't handle those two, With huh? one enemy left. <laughs> and they're generally... Uh, those characters are generally highly favored for score attack. Score attack and time attack are two very different things, though. Um, I mean, they're not completely mutually exclusive, but you don't care about the chain when you're go trying to go fast. So, like, for instance, they had that amazing 52-second justice fight before where they dropped the chain because they didn't bother killing some of the things that are optional to kill, like his heads that he throws in the third phase. But they still got a really good time just by focusing down the boss. So this is Relay. This is another level that's kind of like Checkpoint in that it's very um, sort of linear <clears throat> as opposed to just being one fixed. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh I paid Come for on, it. Like... <laughs> Come on, You took it from me. <laughs> then he went down. <laughs> Gotta make things interesting here. We can't just rock this all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's the, one of the saddest things is picking up a power up and then immediately kissing the pavement because you lose the power up. Oh, you lose your so weapon sad. energy and you lose any equipped power ups. Um, generally, firepower and uh, accelerate last for about 15 seconds apiece, I think. I and think you can, so. Yeah. And, and you can uh, you can actually pick up another one and buffer up to like 30 seconds total with them, I believe. So. In some of these stages, you'll just see, like, especially one of the state, the first stage in the next zone, you'll just see power ups dropping all over the darn place. You don't get them anymore. <laughs> Sam, Sam says uh, Mr. Bond is grounded now. Too late. He is. <laughs> no TV for a month. Oh, oh damn. 
I mean, dang. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Uh, come on, that was an easy one to avoid. It was, <laughs> it really was, but that's okay. <laughs> I bet nobody will notice. <laughs> you. So, we're nearing the end of the level, you. and actually, they're not going to do this, but one thing that you can potentially me, do at me, the end of this me. level is stay on the second to last platform so it doesn't drop and makes it sometimes a little safer, but uh, it's also potentially less fast, so. They want to get all up in enemies' faces to kill them quickly, so they're just roughing it on the final platform, which has all these holes and walls to deal with. You're getting also, hit by Karma Bond. That's I'll what it feels it. like. I'll take it if it means you can't have a power-up. We're also seeing turbo drones in this level, which are the red flying things, so they're a more powerful variant of the drones that we saw earlier on. Um, they shoot three bullets in a row, and they can take you down pretty quickly. Like, is, is one bullet barrage from a, or barrage from a turbo drone enough to actually knock you down? No, I think oh, they only close. cause one damage per bullet still. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. It, it gets you real low, at least. Hmm. I think they only, do they fire three or four? Three. Three. I believe. Okay, now we've got more lasers, which in this case are not coming, they're coming from the Reaper Spectres. Uh, which you're not really seeing much of because they're getting killed so fast. <laughs> but oh, they work kind of like Justice did, where like they aim at you and then they stop tracking a second Doggo, before they go please. into fire. Uh, remember the Titans, everybody? They're bad. Yeah, I do. I remember them. Yeah, that's good because yeah, there's going to be more in the uh, later drop? parts of this level nope. too. Nope, we got more. La we have actual laser turrets before the drop. <laughs> There's going to be at least, uh, in single player, there's two of them. In multiplayer, I'm guessing there's maybe three. I don't know. Oh, I should still. Maybe not. Uh, maybe, not. maybe it's still two on this phase. Yeah, I guess. Now you're going to prepare for the drop, probably. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so you want to be sort of towards the outside of this level uh, when you drop there, because there's this flame in the middle, and you're not going to be entirely sure yes, which nice. way it's pointing. So you don't want to drop right onto it and just fall down immediately. <clears throat> now this flame you'll notice is blue, not red, which means you can't let it do your dirty work for you. It's not going to hurt enemies. You have to do all the enemy damaging. Although there are going to be, uh, well, remember the Titans? There's going to be those. And they can help you out in hurting enemies. Also, the Reaper Spectres can also help you out uh, because their lasers are also red. But you generally probably want to get rid of the Reaper Spectres as soon as possible. Especially if they line up on the outside like those two just did, depending on like the angle you're at, it can actually be kind of hard to get away from them. Uh, you guys have a battery... Oh, okay. It, I was uh, going to say it was drawing into... Oh, you had accelerator. Oh my battery. god, let go! Let go of me, please! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, fetch Fido's. I didn't talk about them. We actually saw those starting on the first level of this uh, zone. Ah. So fetch Fido's are blue toaster dogs as opposed to the white toaster dogs that fire missiles. These guys don't fire anything, but... They're like the orbs that the first phase of justice that we really didn't get to see, uh, where they leash you and kind of like, well, the orbs would actually kind of drag you across the stage, but the fetch finders generally just kind of stay in one place. So you're basically kind of just tied to a telephone pole or something. Uh, but you don't want your movement restricted like that. That's a really bad thing. So when you see a fetch finder sort of lining up with you, you know he's probably gonna try to tether you and you want to get rid of him as soon as possible. Uh, so now we're into Repeater, which is a really interesting level in terms of like the dynamics, because you'll see that the floor constantly forms up around you. It's kind of like, actually, uh, I was watching one minded of Bastion, which is actually kind of a good point, because that was that was kind of the thing throughout the entire game of Bastion. Oh my goodness, no. Holy also, my phase. Uh, did wow, we do Mr. it? Mr. Bond managed to not get We did done do it, holy crud. <laughs> <laughs> I got knocked down to one health and somehow survived. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just, we're just that good. <laughs> um, fun fact about this level, in, in, in the that's never happened before department, one time I managed to see a keg that was trapped between four walls. And the only way to, <laughs> I, I, I literally nice. felt my run was over, but I was, I was starched and I could actually splash damage it through the wall with the micro missiles to move That's on. awesome. That's incredible. But yeah, I have a highlight of that somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be able to happen Mine canisters. Oh yeah, mine tanks. The, uh, the other type of tank. Did we do the second mine phase already? Uh, no, that's the first. Oh, dang it. Mm -hmm. 
That's not good. Wait, really? Is the second mind phase after that? Yeah. I thought, I thought once you get to the mind tax, you're beyond both of the mind phase. Yeah, Which maybe. Phase? I don't know. I don't remember now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, I'm in a bad spot. Because the second mind phase is right before the phase with the, I think it has wasp tanks and drones or something. I forget. Yeah, or that's... wasp tanks and fetch fighters. We haven't hit that yet. I don't think. Oh, jeez. Uh, what was that? I think you already burned through it because this is definitely one of the last phases. <laughs> Are you sure? Wow. Did we yep. just totally blaze a trail through you it just, and not notice? Yeah, you just blazed it completely. Awesome. <laughs> oh. They keep thinking, this yeah. is the sec. Well, okay, the first time you thought you skipped the phase, you hadn't gotten to it. Wow, we really did. Holy cow. Whoa. This time you really, like, blazed through an entire phase without realizing it. That's great. Wow. Can we do okay. more of that? We'll have to watch the replay of this later to find out whether, uh, Holy what, did, cow. Did, did, if the mines Ooh. actually happen. Oh, Looking good. That's All right, split. so this is Venom, otherwise known as Boss Fight Ikaruga percent. Don't screw um, it up, Bond. Uh, I got it this time. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. I imagine that the co-op boss strat is kind of... You have to be kind of careful to do co-op without kissing the pavement a lot because you can bottom. easily... You can easily end up running into things or making each other running into things. I messed it up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right, but yeah, so the reason I call ah. it the Karuga Percent is because we've got all these bullet patterns that feel very much like a shot. Oh, in what? fact, the developers had to tone this down during early access testing because, like, people thought it was way too brutal uh, brutal and it's still like it's still really cool and like it still poses a challenge when you don't know what the heck is going on um and now we're actually gonna have two turrets you can see there's bullets coming from the other side too but they're focusing on this one first these dark blue bullets are actually pretty damn painful oh, now i said it um <laughs> oh man i don't know if that, I don't, is, that, is that word actually on the bad word list i don't like, know that's a pretty mild bad word but um they're pretty dang painful in that they will generally drop you in ah, one hit for them usually uh maybe if you have accelerate you can maybe get away with one um and now we've just got this is like one of the worst phases because there's just so much happening it's so easy to end up walking into stuff because you're trying to see where are you where are you shooting at i'll get the blue well oh, nope didn't no, come on <laughs> man here we have <laughs> here we have the second spin All right, there we go to moon spot. told you i'd get it so that phase definitely catches people by surprise at first and then we've got all of these dark blue bullets of death <laughs> but yeah, that was the spinly doodle phase. Shout out to Moonspot. Uh, this is. Uh, am I allowed to say the butt phase at this event? I don't. Yeah, know. I think butt is pretty good. I think butt is okay. So yeah, that that's Venom's butt, and he's shooting webs at you, which slow you down. And there's these little critters that explode. No, oh, Venom, no. This is the last phase. Howdy, where he back off. Howdy sir. Oh my God, howdy sir. <laughs> you get out of there, man. Oh my God. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that wasn't fantastic. No, <laughs> but it worked. So yeah, ones. you guys actually golded uh, on repeater, I guess, which is not surprising given you weren't even realizing you passed you the skipped phase the mind phase. <laughs> yeah. I got, oh, I All got right. jumped. The welcome to centrifuge. This is the first level of the final zone, and this is one of oh, people's. This is kind of a favorite oh, among people. Oh man, I tried. <laughs> All right, I got red. No more downs. Oh, oh. So a couple used of blue runners there, like to play this with virtual player count set to four because there's just an insane amount of stuff going on. Like virtual player count is a mod you can unlock in the game that gives you the amount of enemies equivalent to if you were playing four players or, or however many players you select, but you're only playing one player. Um, so virtual player count four means enemies are all over the place. There's a ton of them. They take a lot more to kill. But there's also going to be more power-ups, and it's actually kind of hilarious to watch this being played with VPC4 because you just hear the oh, androids no. calling out power-ups all the time. By the way, mine tanks are actually, like, really easy to take care of if you have shutdown because you can just walk right into them and destroy them in a split second. So that's kind of a handy tactic to employ on them. Uh, but yeah, the enemies in this stage come out of the sides. It, the, the side will spin up because it's a centrifuge. And then it'll just stop, and one of the walls will open, and a bunch watch of out. enemies come pouring out. Yep, we've got more mine tanks. Ooh, oh, please. Oh, boy. watching out. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> oh, boy. And, oh, here we've got the... Uh, uh, what are these Fido's called again? Me are these, aren't they no, Mega Fido's the, or something? Something real generic? I, for some reason, I can't remember the name, because it's not right. Turbo Fido. It's Turbo... Right, it's Jumbo. Jumbo, Jumbo Fido, yeah, yeah that's go. right. There you go. So, 
So they're kind of like the re regular Fidos in that they shoot missiles, but they shoot a lot of small missiles instead of one big missile. Uh, but generally, you just have to keep moving when you see them open their tops to fire missiles at you. If you're fast, you can kill them before they ever fire missiles, but yeah, don't count on that with the amount of enemies that have happened here. Okay, control is a really interesting stage. Um, you'll notice that they immediately activated this machine gun turret, and this stage actually has three such turrets, so to speak. Um, there's the machine gun turret at the bottom here. There's a plasma field turret that acts like Coral's secondary weapon, which basically makes this sort of like electronic electric orb that just kind of zaps anything that's within its uh, radius. Right. We generally don't use that turret in this level because it kind of requires staying too much in the same place and keeping th enemies close to you, which is kind of dangerous. Also, so we really like. Go through it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, you mean yeah. like Fido missiles? Yeah, yeah Fido okay, missiles yeah. go right through it. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of Fido missiles, there's some Fido missiles. Um, so we really like the machine gun turret because you only have to step on it to activate it, and then you can move around and it stays active. The disadvantage to that is, well, there's no real way to conserve ammo with it. It'll just go until it runs out, and then you have to wait for it to restock. Um, okay, so these are Buster Titans. You didn't really see much of that one. There's one on the bottom right now. Uh, what they do, if you give them the chance, is they will kind of jump at you and then try to ground pound. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. No, it's, it's fine. <laughs> We're fine. I need that blue. <laughs> Yeah, the, the mine tanks in this level are kind of mean because you don't generally have too much room in any particular direction to go. Also, this... Oh, okay. The stream just buffered for a second, but it's back. Oh, that's weird. How, how have things been for you, Mr. Bond? Uh, pretty good. Consistent. Okay, cool. <laughs> how's, how's life in general? <laughs> you know, I'm okay. <laughs> well, my tail, my tail light's out, but... Uh, it's swell. Um, but, uh, and then in the top right, we actually haven't, they've been hanging out uh, with the machine gun turret the entire time. They are not, in the, in the top right, there is a missile turret, which can also be useful. Uh, and Mr. Bond is going to demonstrate it now. Yeah, I'm The done. difference is you have to stand, <laughs> you have to, you have to stay standing on that in order for it to fire, which again has the pro and cons because you can control how much ammo it uses, oh but you have to kind of stay in one place. So, yeah, machine gun is by far the most preferred, but obviously it's going to run out of ammo sometimes. Uh, I think you guys are... I don't know what's oh, happening. A little bit ahead, okay. Alright, so welcome to Convection, also known as the longest stage in the game. <laughs> um, the worst stage. The hottest uh, one. Depends how Collider goes. Yeah. Yeah, The. I mean, <laughs> even the title of longest stage in the game also depends on how Collider goes, but... You don't want you don't want collider to go that bad um <laughs> but yeah convection uh as the name suggests the gimmick here is you've got these sort of stovetop jet sort of things on the uh on the level and they turn red which means they can damage enemies too but basically they activate and they will sort of they won't immediately kill you they'll just kind of like it's sort of a slow bake kind of thing um you just don't want to stay standing on them. If you see them turning on, just get off of them as soon as possible and try not to run across them. Um, you'll see that like the patterns that uh, it employs, cycles, um, and sometimes it'll actually follow where you're moving too, which is maybe one of the more dangerous <laughs> things it can do actually. Um, yeah, there's also a couple. Not moving when it follows you, you can't stop moving at all. Yeah. <laughs> Which is almost worse if you have Accelerate, because it's like, oh god, what the hell's going on? I just turned on Nibbles hard mode. Oh, who got that one? Oh, you did, okay. I did. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the thing about, especially shutdowns, is like, if you don't know who got it, you don't know who's invincible and who's not, you have to really look closely at your character to see if it's glowing white or not, to know whether you're invincible. Oh, that was super dumb. Oh. <laughs> I agree, it was. <laughs> I don't know. That thing needs to die. There we go. All right, now the fire is following us. Yep. I actually was. I haven't really paid attention enough to the stage when playing at co-op, which I've only done a few times, like as to whether it followed both players. But yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> which means it would be even worse on like four-player. <laughs> it would. 
four streams of fire just going everywhere, yeah. Yeah, four people playing Snake against each other. I'm could realizing play Snake well. against each other. <laughs> I'm we realizing actually could. That... It's funny. Well, people want a Splatoon for that. Venom. We got Snake on Convection. Uh, please get that blue. You're welcome. You. We'll get that one too for good measure. <laughs> and now we've got... Oh, man. wait, is this still following you or is this... Yeah, it's, I think it this is, is the following. final phase follow. It's doing both. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say because I was seeing the patterns, but I'm also seeing it follow you. Holy cow, I didn't think that was the end. Yeesh. All right, so, yeah, now we get introduced to Assault Android Licorice, which if you followed the story, which we haven't been, we've been skipping all boss dialogue. Um, you find out, you see, you kind of find uh, a hint of Licorice at the end of the Venom fight, because you see her silhouette, and she kind of runs away, like, yeah, if you keep following, then you'll find out. So she introduces herself at the beginning of this level, but then she runs away and lets her minions do the dirty work. But, yeah, oh, we'll see her in a little bit. Guy, please, thank you. Incidentally, that first phase, which had all the Titans, remember the Titans? There were the Titans, um, is one of the hardest things to get a, a full combo on the stage with, which I talked about the chain before, but I didn't talk about ranks. Oh. Mm. So basically, depending on your score and your performance, you can get a rank from D through S+. Plus. So you have DCBA, which are strictly score-based. You have S, which you'll get if you never fall down. And you have S+, plus, which you get if you never break chain, which also requires not falling down. Um, and this level generally has two parts that are hard to keep chain on. One is the very first phase, because you have lots of big enemies and low weapon energy. And the other is this fight. So now we're fighting Licorice, and you'll notice we don't see the score at the bottom center of the screen anymore. Now we see another battery. So Licorice shares pretty much all of the mechanics. Oh, that was dumb that the playable androids have. In fact, Licorice is a playable android after you beat the game. Spoilers! Got it. <laughs> nice. So, this is really that. a war of attrition. You want to get the battery, you don't want to let her get the stop battery. It. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Where is she? I can't tell where she is. Oh, there. Okay. I got this one. Get up! <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the... You... You could argue that you have a slight advantage playing co-op in that there is more of you than there is of her, so you can try to cover the battery better, but it's really still up to... Oh, oh no! Get that one. It was right oh, on dang it. I just... I did that. That was dumb. That, I just put the whammy on it. No. Oh, man, I almost yeah. let a really bad word fly. I'm glad I did not. <laughs> General, generally... Oh, there you go. Nice. Okay, you got that one. Okay. Generally, each battery that Licorice gets wastes at least 15 seconds, maybe more. Because, like, I don't know, does it give her a full 30 seconds no. more? No, please, 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 thank you. Got it. Oh, oh man. my goodness. Right, I'm done her. shooting. I'm done shooting. <sighs> yeah. Generally, once you get her down to the final countdown. Do -do 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 -do. Anyway, uh, once you get her down to that, you generally just want to stop hitting enemies if there's been a battery at all recently, so that no battery drops, hopefully. Just focus on keeping her down. And uh, you'll generally have it at that point. So this is the final boss, Medulla. Um, oh, why did I so, do that? Whoa, that was a bad place to stand. Yeah, it was. It's super bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hi, Laser, will you be my friend? <laughs> uh, but, just uh, like everybody else has said no. <laughs> Aw, sad panda. I was, I was, I was mentioning before that this boss will encourage you to learn how to weapon swap, and like you'll notice that in that first phase, and we'll also see in the next phase after this one, like the bullets just kind of surge out from the center all at once. Um, oh, come on! So that was an embryo fight, by the way. So here, when the bullets surge out, you basically have two choices: either try to play it safe by staying on the outside and maneuvering your way in or stay right in the center next to the boss, and then weapon swap right as it shoots the bullets out. Um, you're actually seeing them hang back here, but that's also because it was nearly Ooh. the end of the phase. Whoa, that was pretty close for Mr. Bond right there. I don't know how that didn't hit him. Yeah, that, that should have been the shutdown. done. Getting shut down on Vespa's phase here is always good because this phase is just super annoying and dangerous. She needs to die so though, basic... please. Yeah, <laughs> oh jeez. Oh no. Oh no. Oh jeez. I got her. All right, okay. I need this gun. This will help speed us up a little. 
But uh, yeah, so basically the second, fourth, and sixth phases involve refighting the last phase of the first three bosses. We do not fight Venom again because, well, Venom would have trouble fitting in this what? one. What? Oof. It spawned on top of me. Well, it kind of, what, the ring of bullets, you mean? Yeah. It does kind of warn you, though, right? Sort of. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it kind of like, it goes in, in before it goes out, sort of. Oh, we're both going in for um, that. <laughs> whoa, that was, yeah. Hero shut down. <laughs> and another shut down. One thing you can actually do on this boss, they chose not to, is uh, wait for a couple Son of the laser fences mm. to pop them so that you get another power up going into this fight. Uh, this is the second to last phase. It feels like the last phase. The game wants you to think it's the last phase. I shouldn't actually say it's the second to last phase. <laughs> um, so this phase throws a whole lot of stuff at you, including a laser, which can also oh, hurt the wow. boss. There's an achievement for that, actually. If you if you kill the boss with its own laser, there is a it's stop uh, shooting yourself. Don't go over there. There's a lot of tentacles. Oh, Please. my God. Uh, Please yeah, die. So there this we go. boss can get out of hand really quick. So, all right. They managed to deal with the tentacles and kill Medulla, or so we think. Oh, wait. No. What's this? Hey, it's not quite dead yet. I think it's getting better. Um, so this is the Aether Sphere, uh, which is which used, at least used to be everybody's worst nightmare. Um, the developers actually made the enemies uh, a little bit easier to kill on this sometime a few months ago uh, to try to encourage more people to really? be able to... Uh oh Really? Yeah, the, the, the hurt boxes for the explosions on really? the big cubes is kind of ridiculous. It's not always clear exactly level where three, they're going to explode. Oh my God, and they also three. explode on delay. Well, that's a lot of lasers. Oh, I mean... <laughs> Holy cow! Oh, Starch, what's the deal here? <laughs> Well, that was something. But we did it, and time stops when we hit continue at the end of this to go into the last cutscene. So, time. That's a new PB, isn't it? It is a new PB. Despite me rattling my mouth off the entire time? <laughs> I think because of you rattling your mouth off the entire time. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. It could have been a lot better, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could have been like a minute. Could have been a sub 51. Yeah, it could so have. Far. It definitely could have.